Welcome back to Final Fantasy V Spoof. You've come back for more. Let's take a look at the new jobs we picked up from the crystal, uh, first few crystal fragments of that fire crystal. Uh, these are the jobs we've got. So, so far we've got Knight, of course, Brawler, Klepto, we've been using Ninja. There's the description of Ninja. There we go. Love the throwing. Uh, the Celtic. There we are there. The Sword Mage, not as original Churchy. We already have uh, Time Mage Trainer we've had before. Blue Mage, Red Mage, Mediator. That's the Beastmaster. Uh, kind of gross description there. And Druid is the Tree Hugger, one with the Earth, etc. We're going to be heading down to the Ancient Library, uh, known in this game as the uh, Manga Library. That's okay. Totally okay. Notice Butts is still set as a Klepto, as a Thief. Um, that's so I can just kind of get a few more items here, and I would like to get him up to learning that uh, that dash ability, so we don't have to always have a thief in the party to be able to use the dash ability going through. Uh, here, I am going to see. I'm not sure how well we're going to be able to do this. I might have to do this off stream if it's going to take some time. Uh, but you can learn Aqua Breath from one of the the only monster that you can fight in that desert, the Chimera enemy. All right, cool. This one we're gonna fight out because this is gonna be worth a pretty good chunk of experience, etc. Let's go ahead and haste up Lena, who's gonna be doing most of my damage in this battle. Turtles are weak against ice. Uh, Bolt will do okay against the bird. Plus that Guardian Dagger does really nice damage from my Thief. And there's the, so you can see the Rod Boosted Ice 2 spell into a weakness. Uh, Bolts, I guess not doing quite so much damage from my unboosted White Mage there fighting around. That's not a problem, that's okay. I'll just stick with Ice 2 on the Zoo there. Still pretty nice damage as you can see. I should probably be yoinking, but that's okay. Um, these guys, there's not a whole lot. Uh, magic damage does not do very much to these little guys. Kind of hard to pump damage into them. So I won't be fighting a lot of battles on my way down here, but this is one that's worth it for me with this party. And again, this is a pretty casual playthrough. I'm just going to be using all the abilities around. Um, Luckily, I don't have to do any special preparation for these. That's why I've been kind of under-leveled. I did pick up a few extra levels before we pop down here. I will just uh, pop out of this one because you've seen this battle already. I don't need to grind when we're making a video. Nobody wants to see that. We just want to see... Kitaros. Huh. Uh, I'm assuming that these are manga references. Uh, to artists, maybe, or characters um, from 2002-ish. Okay, so these guys are all just big manga fans. What's this guy have to say? Yeah, so chime in in the comments. Let me know if you know what all of those references are. Because I am certainly not sure. Okay, don't mind the freaks that hang out in the front room. <laughs> Searching the world for manga. Alright. Wow, a lot of these references... Okay, I know what hentai is, but a lot of these manga references are a little bit past me. There's a manga I'll never read. Pokemon. <laughs> I love this. Now, I did find the secret manga library in the castle um, back there before. All right, I'll even see what the guys up here have to say. One of one of these guys triggers a random battle. Well, if you talk to the book, uh, it gets you a random battle. 420! 187. Okay, so we've got... Uh, 
Looks like we have some monster change names. Uh, I'm not sure what the 22 reference is, but uh, 69187 is the police code for murder that's often used in so many 90s rap songs, and of course 420. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what 22 is. Let me know in the comments if you know what 22 means or knew what it meant back in 2002. I am not sure. So some mild puzzling going on uh, down here. Again, if you know your way through, you can do it quickly. And the battles down here are not really worth fighting unless you're trying to learn um, some blue magic spells, which would be certainly handy, but because I have access to all of the jobs, I don't need to build up my blue mage too much because I do have access to all the abilities around. Um, so it's not really worth it for me to grind for trying to learn level 5 death. There's page 22. And I wonder which one is the one that teaches uh, level 5 death. I don't know if it's 69 or 187. 420. <laughs> so here we have to go fight uh, Ifrit. And I'll just make sure we've got uh, ice rods where we need them. There we go. And gonna have to make you a black mage again just until we learn that level three stuff just until we learn that level three stuff no problem no problem all right there we go <laughs> can we run away no not from a freak you cannot run away from a freak should have given him some some magic. That's okay. Yeah, see, that's unfortunate right there. That's that's a bad one. The single targeting fire two, and that's part of the problem with having a an underpowered um, team like this. I'm actually gonna uh, let's. Yeah, that's how I'll bring Ferris back. Because Freed only, I think, only has about 3,000 or so hit points. I haven't, it's been a while since I've looked at the algorithms guide because we're kind of in the off season of um, of the Forge Job Fiesta, so I'm not quite as. Oh, man. There's that target again. Ouch. That's too bad. And I don't know if I'm going to have. Well, Gaelic may have enough MP for one more life casting. Yeah, one more life casting, but th that's going to be all the life castings I have after this one. I have to start. Hucking Phoenix Downs, which are very expensive. Alright, and now cannot quite survive. One or two more levels and he would be able to survive that one, but that's fine. This actually might do it right here. Yeah. He's weakened. <laughs> Throw the Pokeball! Okay, so yes, summoners are full on Pokemon. So now normally the Beastmaster, there we go, so we caught him. And we do pick up the uh, Ifrit. There we go. <laughs> we do pick the summon spell Ifrit. No problem. No problem. Okay. All right. Neato burrito. And <laughs> anti section adults only. I'll move the bookshelf. Normally the bookshelf is scared of Ifrit. That's what the, that text prompt normally is. Stealth robe, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I can't uh, move that equip. It's okay. Again, I'm not going to bother using an item or a spell. For that death, there's, this is the level five death caster right there. And getting a free there is, I suppose, supposed to be a hint that this next boss, Biblos, who is a really, really nasty one, he's a real piece of work. Uh, there's nothing out here, I believe. Yep, nothing out there. There is a um, sprite-initiated battle here that you can just run from. No problem. You can just take right on off. If my thief was alive, I would just use the escape ability. All right, here we go. Let's revive. Tent's a lot cheaper than a Phoenix Down. This game, Phoenix Downs are really, really expensive. At a thousand, you know, Jill, they are very, very pricey to buy them. 
Um, yeah, pretty ridiculous how much those cost. And I'm just going to move him to the back row so he can just help out with healing as needed. And I'll let my two black mages just go nuts on Biblos there. See if I can pick up that, that level 3 black with my um, with Ferris down there. And try to pick up some AP as a thief with Butts so he can get that dash ability learned. That passive dash ability so I can use that going through dungeons without needing to keep him as a thief. Be on guard. This is Biblos right here. Uh, and he should not be a big problem. Yeah, there's the Luck Mallet, so you can't get some stuff out of him. Magic Hammer, glad that he used it on the Thief. That is not a problem for me. And we want to be using Flame Rods for this one. And I could just start breaking Flame Rods, but I'm going to save myself a little bit of money. Maybe I'll break one at the end if he's threatening to start uh, using Drain and all of that nasty stuff on me. But otherwise, we'll just go with Boosted Fire 2s, because they should do plenty of damage. He has, I think, 3,600 hit points. Yeah, and the Rod Boosted Fire 2s are going to be prime source of damage. Once he gets below a certain level, he's going to start using Drain. Which is not good. Wind Slash is a baddie. That's a baddie. And see if this is enough to finish the job. Certainly it is. I did not want him to start draining. I wanted everyone to get the AP from this fight because I think this gives me a nice chunk of AP. And this is the first time you get the long version of the, the boss fade away. Cool beans. Yeah, 7 AP. Uh, and that works out nice. That will get my mages a lot closer to that next level. And this is uh, young mid. We defeated your biblos. And now normally mid is just kind of like so so into the uh, into the book that uh, that he's just kind of so distracted by reading, and then we all get frustrated. Oh, it's Jacob, huh? Secret passage. You're a messed up kid. That's true. He looks like a messed up kid. All right, here we go. And back to the main floor of the library. We'll trigger the next couple of story sequences here. Uh, we'll, we'll soak up some more text. Otaku. That guy gets a name, huh? <laughs> All right. Now my poor Biblos is dead. So he finds half of the of the secret book. The secret book. Let's see. Okay, Dojin Shi. I'm guessing I can guess what that means. I have not heard that term before, but I'm guessing I know what that means. So Sid is he's back at the ancient library. I'm down. Let's go. All right. Cool. So onward back to Karnak. We got to talk to Sid to trigger the next couple of story sequences. So we'll do that, we'll see what that text reads, and how the story goes on, with, with Mid being named Jacob. I wonder if that is a reference to someone specific. I am not sure. The Ancient Library is, is usually on the short side for us. 
Oh, I, did, I think I did maybe put an elf cape on him. Oh, no, that's right. The zoo has a rare steel. I think it's an elixir, but it's a rare steel, so it's it's very, very difficult to pick up. Got to save here, because I don't think at my current hit point level, off the top of my head, I think getting hit with Aqua Breath might just kill our characters flat out, even if one of them was a blue mage, so I would need to pick up a few more levels before I'm able to go after learning Aqua Breath. It's the only off chance I can pick up a cheap elixir before I run. Running also charges the chicken knife for me, so these run runs aren't completely useless. So we find Sid up here in the pub. By the way, there is a fire rod that I picked up when the stream was not on, um, up on top of that castle wall and all the way down to the left. There is a fire rod you can get for free, and I did buy some other rods while I was there. All right, here is the sequence with Sid. Asking about Jacob. You're all dead to me now, huh? Says Sid. Here comes Jacob. So you find, you find half of the secret book, and the scholars say they've looked all over the world and could not find the other half of the book, which is a very vague clue uh, that something happened in the world and that that must exist on a different world, maybe. Because, of course, this world used to be a merged world with another world, and they separated and split. I don't know what that is. And so normally he shows Sid the book, and Sid finds some secrets that help him fix up the fire ship. Check it out. Squall and Zell, baby. <laughs> Gunblade. Wrong cell. Huh. Some engineering. And that is what happens in the <laughs> in the game is that uh, Sid learns some, some engineering secrets from the ancients. But now we can get that ship to move without the Crystal's protector, thermal protectors. So that crystal uh, normally powered that ship, but now Sid can work on it and get it going without help from the crystal. So here we come. Here we come. We'll talk to Sid, get the ship running, and then we'll call it uh, call it a video here. So we're getting close to that 20 minute mark, which is where I like to keep these videos when possible. This next sequence is just a series of triggers you need to go to. and a bunch of story sequences where you just kind of bounce around the world from Sid to Mid, uh, chasing them around a little bit to the library, back to the ship, to the uh, underground ancient workshop. And now Galef has some exposition to give us, which the author of this patch just said, let's just get right to Galef's exposition. Let's not mess around anymore. And Galef Normally suffering amnesia uh, in the normal game, but here he's uh, hallucinating. But here he shares some memories of things that reminded him when he saw Mid uh, run in and recognize his grandpa. It makes Galef remember that he has a granddaughter, and we've actually seen her earlier in this game. And that's Kara. But we saw her way back in the um, siren sequence when uh, when everybody was seeing memories of their distant past 
Uh, Butts saw his, uh, his parents, or maybe it was just his mom, Stella. Dorgan is his dad, and Stella is his mom. Can't you hear me, Yella? I'm hoping that that joke made it into this one. I'll be a little disappointed if it did not. I will be tripping that memory sequence. So we will see if that joke made it in. I'm going to call that now. So we'll see if the author of this patch was aware of that Simpsons line when uh, constructing this one. Again, I don't, I don't know where Jacob came from. But do get in touch in the comments if you understood any of those uh, manga references. <laughs> Let me know where those came from. I know very little about uh, anime and manga. That's one area of nerddom that I am not so well versed in. But certainly uh, would not besmirch anybody else who was into that or followed that scene. No problem. There's Dorgan. And getting some screenshots of these. All right, I remember that phrase from uh, the late 90s and early 2000s. And I'll be sharing a lot of these screenshots and, of course, these videos once I hit YouTube on my Twitter account, which is also active underscore A-T-E. So I will share screenshots of these. And also, hmm, Galef, Galef killed Dorgan in this one over a game of Monopoly. <laughs> All right, let's keep Galef around. And this will get us uh, to our ship. So if you did enjoy this video, do hit that thumbs up button, uh, make a comment, especially if you know some of those manga references again, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will uh, continue this one with the Crescent Lake sequence next time. We're going to get some more jobs, we're going to get some, we're going to meet the bar, we're going to play some more pianos, we're going to bounce around the world a little bit. So always should be fun here as we get to kind of the middle of Act 1 in Final Fantasy V. And as we get control of the steamship, we'll say goodbye to Sid and Mid for now. <laughs> We're giving the ship to you. And we do have to save that last crystal. The Earth Crystal is the last one, but we won't get there for a while. This marks the end of FF5 spoof version 0 0.21. 0 0.21. Ha! Huh. Well, I guess I don't know if that's really the end. That caught me by surprise. That caught me by surprise. Let me um, let me pop down and trigger the Crescent Lake cutscene. Normally I do a few other things, but let me pop down and trigger that Crescent Lake cutscene uh, and see if this is indeed the end of the spoof hack. Um, I mentioned before that in, in an original README I was looking at, uh, it was not complete in, an, in the README that I downloaded, but uh, that was dated quite a while ago. That was dated uh, many years ago. And it looked like the patch had been updated more recently than that, so... Let's see what happens. Normally I would have ended it right there, but if that's possibly the end of the of the spoof, then that's the end of the spoof. And maybe this will just turn into a casual run of FF5 after all. Yep, here we go. Heading down to Crescent Lake. Here we go. So let's see if the, uh, see what the villagers have to say. And indeed, that does look like the end.
that does indeed look like the end of uh, of the spoof, at least for now. And I thought that the original version went up to the Earth Crystal. This only goes just to, it looks like, to the Fire Crystal and Ancient Library. Yep, so this is, uh, we're right back to the normal RPGE translation. I think. Yeah, this definitely looks too tame for FF5 spoof. Yep, this is hinting at things that they can hear underground. Let's visit the Bard's house and see if he's back to normal too. Hello, Bard. There we go, and that's the regen song that just casts regen on everybody. We'll play his piano and get a little better. So this will be the end of Final Fantasy V spoof right here. So we have seen the work of a still as yet unfinished spoof hack. So overall, I guess I'll give a quick review of it. Uh, quick, quick thoughts. I wasn't expecting to end it right here, but here we are. Um, I did not so much in 2017 love the level of humor from uh, Lena's storyline and also Ferris's uh, gay pirate with gay panic story. Um, but I really, really did like all of the meta jokes about the, the RPG genre, especially from the 90s and early 2000s. The reference to other Final Fantasy games is great. Um, that I thought was clever. I did like the manga library. Not, I didn't even mind so much the adult manga section uh, jokes, but in 2017, some of the other jokes have aged just a little bit less ideally. So that's going to be it for now for Final Fantasy V spoof. We will, uh, again, hit that like button, subscribe, make a comment, get in touch with me on Twitter, all of that stuff. Uh, and we will see you next time with another series.